All right, so we're going to fill in some notes since I was gone. Uh, well, I'm going to be gone today. So some of you already have this page, but this is Friar Marco de Niza. So Cabeza de Vaca, uh, explored Texas, first European sport uh, to explore Texas. We've gone over this lots of times. Uh, and in his journeys, he never claimed to see any riches whatsoever. But uh, there were rumors uh, of a golden city of Cibola far to the north. He told the Spanish, and the Spanish immediately sent an expedition. Uh, Cabeza de Vaca returned to go find Cibola. By the way, if you're hearing that whining, that's my little daughter. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so uh, Deniza goes north looking for this Cibola, these golden cities. When uh, he uh, arrives in what is now New Mexico, he brings uh, Estevanico with him, who was with Cabeza de Vaca. And Estevanico is killed by a group of Zuni Indians. They'd never seen uh, an African uh, person with dark skin before. Uh, Deniza panics, and he runs as fast as he can away from the Zuni village. Uh, and then one evening, far, far in the distance, he claims to see this golden city of Cibola far off in the distance. Now, we don't know what he actually saw. We have really no idea. But he writes that he sees a a city of great wealth far in the distance, but because of Estevan Eco's death, he's too nervous to go and try and see it. Uh, most likely he probably saw uh, this, which is about, probably a mirage or sun reflecting off adobe roofs, uh, like the adobe brick houses that, for example, the Humano in South Texas lived. So he goes back. Uh, this is his journey. Uh, as you see, it's not really anywhere near Texas. Cibola, where Cibola supposedly is, where he sees it, is uh, uh, just near where modern day Santa Fe is. Uh, you see the Rio Grande uh, right here. This is the western part of Texas, but Texas will come into this in just a second. So now that they have seen Cibola, uh, when he gets back, the Spanish are going to try to send a military uh, uh, conqueror like Cortez before him to go and get it. And that military conqueror is a guy named Francisco Vasquez de Coronado. So Coronado is a, a governor of a Spanish province in New Spain and what is now Mexico. And he is going to basically wager everything to go and conquer this city to become even more wealthy and uh, famous and that kind of stuff. And so he, he raises an army of about 1,300 soldiers, most of them Spanish. He also has some Indian allies from central Mexico he's going to bring with him. Uh, tons of horses, uh, cattle, uh, goats and sheep. It's just basically a huge self-sufficient army that he's bringing north into what is now New Mexico looking for Cibola. So when they arrive in New Mexico, they cause all sorts of problems for the local Native American population. If you remember, we talked about how nasty Columbus was. Well, Coronado is just as nasty. He would go into villages, throw up a cross, have all the Indians come in front of the cross, and then basically say, you will now convert to Jesus or I will burn you alive. And he did that. He would just kill and kill and kill uh, to spread Christianity. And then meanwhile, his men would go through these Pueblo houses, just ransacking them, destroying them. Uh, sorry, she's very talkative this morning. Uh, ransacking and destroying them while they... Uh... Okay. Uh, ransacking and destroying while they're looking for gold. They didn't find any of them. They never found any gold in New Mexico. So meanwhile... There's a Indian named the Turk, uh, El Turco. Uh, the the Spanish think he looks Turkish, and so they sorry, this little toy she's playing with. Off. Uh, uh, he tells them basically, hey, there is this rich city. It's not here. Uh, it's far to the east. It's called Quivera, and so basically the Turk just wants to get rid of these Spanish. He basically is drawing the short straw probably with a group of Indians and it's his job to get them out of what is now New Mexico. And so because there's promises of wealth, Coronado's group goes east. Uh, they cross the Great Plains of Texas. Uh, Columbus, uh, sorry, not Columbus. Coronado describes it as an ocean of grass. They have to use a sea compass because uh, they have no idea where they are. There's no landmarks whatsoever. Uh, but when they get there, finally, all the way across Kansas into Oklahoma into modern-day 
across, sorry, all the way across Texas to Oklahoma, all the way into Kansas. Uh, they find no wealth whatsoever. What they find is basically a grass hut village. Uh, Coronado knows that this El Turco was lying and he is killed. And so in 1542, after several years of searching, Coronado's expedition returns to Mexico, finding nothing. So at least there's a good positive part to the story, even though Coronado is going to kill hundreds of Native Americans and cause all sorts of chaos for these people. At least Coronado doesn't get anything out of it. Uh, on the right side of your paper, uh, expedition. This is a vocabulary word we need to know. Uh, expedition right there, a journey undertaken with a set goal. So this is Coronado's uh, adventures. He covers a large part of the modern day United States Southwest, including Texas. And he discovers several things. Probably the most important thing he's going to discover is he sends men out West into what is now Arizona and the Colorado river. And he finds the grand Canyon, uh, which is a tremendous discovery. Uh, it's a, a magical place. Obviously, if you've ever been there, this humongous, you know, Canyon system. Uh, but the Spanish are not impressed by it because there is no gold whatsoever. Like they look around, they're like, Oh, there's gotta be gold here. And they don't find anything. Uh, Coronado and his men do cross into Texas. They do find Palo Duro Canyon. We believe in the red river. They talk about a Canyon in the middle of a plains and then they go into, uh, Oklahoma and Kansas. But so they cover all of this land, all of this land up here and find no treasures, no gold. At the same time, another expedition is sent out to find Cibola, but this time from the east. And this is led by a man named Hernando de Soto. So de Soto, which there's a town named after him near us, de Soto, Texas. Uh, de Soto is going to explore the southeastern United States looking for gold. His most important discovery is he is going to be the first European to discover the Mississippi River. Now, the Mississippi River, as we'll talk about next week, is hugely important to the United States. The Mississippi River, if you've ever seen it, is the largest river in North America. It is humongous. At most parts of the Mississippi River, basically St. Louis down to New Orleans, it's a mile across, right? Think about that, a mile across. It's a huge, huge river, the artery of the United States. And DeSoto and his men are the first Europeans to see it. Now, unfortunately for DeSoto himself, at the Mississippi, he becomes very ill and he dies. But his men continue on searching for gold. They even make it all the way to East Texas, and they become the first Europeans to meet the Caddo Indians in the East Texas Piney Woods. But do the Caddo Indians have any wealth? No. Nor do any of the Indians far to the east. So this is uh, DeSoto and his men discovering the Mississippi River. Discover, of course, in Parentheses, parentheses there because uh, obviously there was already people on the Mississippi River, these Native American populations. So this is DeSoto's journey. So DeSoto lands basically in Florida and as you see, covers the southeastern United States all the way up to Georgia, all the way up to North and South Carolina. Uh, you know, far west is Alabama, Louisiana, Arkansas, and then into Texas. What I think is really interesting is that his uh, his men and DeSoto uh, are going to take detailed notes on his journey. And all of these names that you see on this drive are the different names of the Native Americans that they ran into on their journey. So they ran into lots of Native Americans. The ones here in Texas, these are mostly the Caddo Indians. And, and all of these tribes actually over here are very similar to the Caddo. They're all uh, mound building kind of Indians. But they search far and wide, southeast United States, put with Coronado and uh, Cabeza de Vaca's expedition. And they've searched almost the entire southern part of the United States from the Atlantic Ocean all the way basically to the Grand Canyon. And they found no natural treasures, no gold and no silver. Now, south of the modern day United States in places like modern day Mexico and then in Central America and in South America, there are tons of gold and tons of treasures which the conquistadors go and they conquer. And so for the Spanish, they look at this land as, well, it's big and it's, you know, it's beautiful in some places, but it doesn't have any treasures. We're just going to leave it alone. And so the most important thing on the right side of your paper is that the Spanish are going to lose interest in Texas and North America because there is no treasures there. And that is going to open the door for other European settlement. 
1603 on the eastern coast of the United States in Virginia. The English are going to settle at Jamestown. And then, of course, the French are going to come in into Canada and then eventually Louisiana and even Texas, as we should talk about. So this is our search. All of this land they've searched and they found no treasures whatsoever. The Spanish do have a permanent settlement for the first time in the modern day United States. That's going to be over here in Florida at St. Augustine. And the only reason they do that is because to the north there was a, there was a temporary French settlement there, which they destroyed. All right. Uh, you don't have to do this analogy ticket, so I'll just go back. All right. Thank you for listening. Make sure your notes are filled out all the way until where it says the French in Texas. We're going to do that next week. And then work on the vocabulary assignment and the chart. You don't have to do the French part, which is La Salle. And then I think there's three vocabulary words at the very end. You don't have to do because we're going to do those next week. Okay. That is not a homework assignment. You will turn it in next week to me. Have a good day. Bye.